Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. Romeo, how you doing today, Coach? Hey, I'm doing good. How about you guys? Good. <laughs> good, yeah. Romeo. Did, thanks. Did you hear the rumor that Rand, you know, Jerry came on, asked Randy to be a part of it, and he said, oh, yeah, sure, Coach, I'll be a part of it. Yeah. Next thing you know, he's making up excuses, and he's bailing on the kids. <laughs> Well, you know what? He's there in spirit, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, let's talk first about the uh, East-West uh, Shrine game coming up this Saturday and your part and how big it is for these uh, guys that will be playing and what it means for their future. Well, you know what? It's uh, huge for these guys because they get great exposure during the week. Uh, there are a lot of uh, GMs, scouts, uh, some coaches that are here uh, watching practice. Uh, and then, you know, also then they'll get to film of the game and they'll be evaluated that way also. Uh, like I told them, it was a great job interview. Uh, 32 of the top uh, companies in the country are, are watching, and uh, you need to put that best foot forward. And, uh, you know, and also doing it for the Shriners Hospital, it's an opportunity for them to give back to the community a little bit. Yeah, and I, I remember, Romeo, when the, the East-West game was in the Bay Area and it had a long tradition there. In, in the San Francisco area for the, you know, the Shriners Hospital and the kids and everything else. It's so great to see it now being continued. And it's also great that there is a resource for these young men besides the Senior Bowl to go and play in an all-star game and get in front of the personnel people. It, it, uh, it sure is. Um, you know, there are only so many opportunities that these guys will have uh, to make a club. And the more exposure that you get, uh, the better chance you have to impress somebody, uh, the better chance somebody may see that diamond in the rough and, and they may see something that they like and want to bring you to camp. And so for these kids, uh, it's it's really a great opportunity. And some of them will be going on to play in the Senior Bowl. So, <clears throat> so they get uh, double exposure. And you guys actually got to go see the kids at the Shriners Hospital. What was that like? Hey, you know what? That was a tremendous kickoff to the week. Uh, you wouldn't believe... Uh, the show, really, that they put on. Uh, there are cheerleaders, there are DJs playing music, and the kids were lined up. And it was like the opening kickoff, and you're, you're going through the uh, opening line, and the kids there, uh, they're high-fiving you. And, and, you know, some of, many of them have braces and are limited in what they're able to do. But you can see the gleam in their eyes as you go through that line and make contact with them. Um, and they are just so appreciative uh, of us being there. Uh, on the wait for dot com hotline coach Romeo Cornell uh, will be uh, coaching the West team for the East West Shrine game this Saturday office uh, also the defensive coordinator in Houston and you know former head football coach there in Cleveland uh, let's talk some NFL coach and with all this uh, coaching I guess they call it the coaching carousel if you will uh, some of the hires and fires there are two jobs still available, one in Minnesota and one in your old stomping grounds in Cleveland, and it looks to me nobody wants that gig. Why doesn't anybody want to go coach in Cleveland? Well, I'm not exactly sure. You know, I I went and coached in Cleveland. So Yeah, uh, that's why I'm asking you. Those guys should reconsider. <laughs> is there is there something that is it, it, it is it the city is I mean the personnel's good I mean there you, you look at what Gordon did this year I mean they have a quarterback issue yeah uh, but you got you know the defense you got some really good young Attention. talent on the defense is it the management I mean if if you were a guy especially an up and coming coach and that opportunity's there why are these coordinators turning down the position Well I'm not exactly sure uh you know, I, I think any young coach should go interview and take a look at the situation and then make their own determinations about their future and what they think is best for them and their families. Uh, and, you know, I, I think that uh, maybe that's what they're doing, and for whatever reason they're choosing um, not to look at the Cleveland job at this moment. Um, I don't think it says that Cleveland is a bad situation. I think it says that for that individual uh, at this point in time, uh, he doesn't think it's best for him. Hey, um, hey, Romeo, when it comes to those jobs, you just took one in Houston as a defensive coordinator. Well, not, not yet. Not yet? Not yet. Oh, okay. I thought you had. Well, I thought no. we had the inside scoop and we were just going to go with it like that. 
Well, see, that's the thing. You guys have the inside scoop, and then the rest of us only have the outside ah. scoop. <laughs> so so I, I've got to coach this East-West game, and then after uh, coaching the East-West game, I'll see what's out there for me. Oh, there you go. Okay. Okay. Well, you look at a job like Houston. You surprised – that turned over because I mean, when you were at Cleveland and heck, over the last five six years, that's been a that's been an amazing place with a lot of really talented players. It sure has, and you know, it is a little surprising. It's surprising on one side, but then on the other side, it's not surprising because this league is a bottom line league, and you have to win. And if you don't win, then they look to try to fix whatever problems that they perceive. Uh, no matter how close you think you might be, you know, you could have a good team, but if the key guy goes down or the key guy doesn't play well, then you don't win games. And so now then management says, hey, I need to do something. And, and so I think that was the case in Houston. Um, even though they were 2-14, and 14, uh, you, would, you would say that they are a, they are, they are a better team than 2-14 and 14, uh, with the talent that they have. You obviously know what it takes to win a Super Bowl. What do you see happening after this weekend's conference championships? Who do you see shaking out of these games? Well, I tell you, you know, it's it's hard to go. As much as I like the Patriots, it's hard to go against Peyton Manning. That guy out there, you know, I, I think that um, somehow – he will probably come out on top out there. If they were playing in New England, it would be a different deal. But uh, they're playing out there in Denver, and, and it's hard to, uh, to go against him out there. And likewise, Seattle, playing in Seattle, I think it's going to be hard for me to go against them out there. So uh, that's kind of what I see, uh, a Denver-Seattle matchup. Romeo, Randy Cross hates Peyton Manning, and I can't figure oh. out why. I mean, I don't <laughs> – you know, there are some guys that, you know, I, I guess they're just fun to hate, but Randy despises Peyton, and I, I have all the utmost respect for Peyton Manning, and, and I just don't get it. Do you think Randy's jealous of him, Romeo? Well, you know, sometimes uh, you have an interaction with a guy, and, and it, it rubs you the wrong way, and you always <laughs> remember that. So, you know, maybe that's the case. I just, I, I just happen to hold people to a higher standard, Romeo. I kind of like those. <laughs> Those platinum trophies they hand out at the end of the year, and I think that's <laughs> what designates who the best quarterbacks are, not fantasy stats. <laughs> He's a little protective of Joe Montana. You can yeah, understand, Yeah, Montana, right? Brady, those guys that have won multiples. Yeah, he still sleeps at night with a Joe Montana pillow. He snuggles, especially when his wife Patrice is out of town. And, and like this would, weekend. And you would, too, actually. <laughs> uh, with the, you know, we've got a couple minutes left with the coach. With, with the coaches that have been hired so far, uh, Caldwell recently, Recently to Detroit as of yesterday, Wisenhunt to Tennessee, O'Brien from Penn State to Houston, um, Jay Gruden, which I love that hire going to Washington, and Lovey Smith to Tampa. Uh, out of those situations, who do you, you know, take the Houston job that you most, let's just say you're, that you're up for out of the question. Out of those hires, which one of those uh, do you see going in and making the biggest impact right away? Well, then I think. Uh... What you kind of have to do is you kind of have to look at uh, who might have the best quarterback, and and the guy who has the best quarterback might make uh, the biggest splash this coming season. Because as you mentioned just a minute a minute ago, as we we're talking about a Montana and an Elway and a Brady, uh, they are key positions in this league, and you have to have one who can who can execute and who can play. And if you don't have one, then generally you're struggling. Uh, all of those coaches uh, have had uh, head coaching experience it's, it's somewhere along the way, and so that will bode well for each organization. But uh, then let's look at the quarterback and, and see which quarterback uh, will play the best, and I think that's the guy who's going to make the – Make the most out of his situation. Hey, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that. Romeo, Romeo, do you consider Matt Stafford an elite quarterback, a guy that when you, if you saw that, that would be a decision like tilting kind of quarterback? Well, you know what? I think that you have to say that that guy has 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 proven along the way that he can get it done. You know, um, now being able to get it done on a regular basis, or you know, do you have an off year or not? Can you come back from an off year? Um, you know, so some of that is guesswork, um, but, you know, he has played and, and can play. 
All right, we're going to let you go Saturday. Best of luck to you, Coach in the West there at the East-West Shrine game. I could talk to you for hours. I had so many more things I wanted to discuss with you. Maybe you can come on again sooner than later, or you can invite me over for dinner, Coach, and we can sit down here. <laughs> One of the two, yeah. Chit-chat. It's up to you. <laughs> that sounds good. All right, on the WadeFord.com hotline, it was a pleasure, Coach Romeo Cornell. Thank you for your time, sir. Best of luck this upcoming season, all right? Thanks. Appreciate it. All Thank right, you. we'll see you later Bye-bye. there. Sports Radio 92.9 The Game.